So I'm in a pod at the Falkenberg Road Jail, and I'm one of the orderlies. There's four orderlies. So it's three of them are murderers and me. Zach, my man, Zach, what's up, man? Oh. We all going to come up, though, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. Like, he knocked his tooth out like Mike. What happened to your tooth? Hey, I knocked it out, hit myself against the bedpost. And you're like, oh. <laughs> and he was like, hey, 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 hey. That didn't make it in there. <laughs> you imagine the jury was up there and I'd be, every time they'd say something, I'd look at the jury like. Hey, this is Matt Cox and I'm here with Isaac Allen, or you as you know him as uh, Zach. And we're going to be talking about basically his case, what happened, why he went to jail, what and uh, getting out of jail, starting his whole basically life over again. We're also going to talk about some of the insane characters that he met while incarcerated. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. So check this out. So I understand you were um, <laughs> the, at the, uh, accosted uh, <laughs> uh, in the trenches. Yes. This yes. is my Vietnam. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Back, back. Back. Unfortunately, back in the trenches. A couple of bad decisions led to my arrest, and so um, went to jail. Well, got accused. Went to jail. What had, were you charged with? <laughs> uh, theft and 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 checks and and fraud and forgery. That's um, so unlike you. Yeah, definitely not even up my alley. You know. So um, end up going to jail, although this was kind of a misunderstanding. I ended up going to jail, uh, under, I turned myself in because I was, you know, had the privilege of having a detective not notify me ahead of time. So I worked with my probation officer, turned myself in, knowing that I was facing a violation of my supervised release. Right. So, with so you are currently on federal supervised release. Correct. And the state was investigating you. Right. So- you know, because people are always like, oh, this and that. You know, well, okay, well, there's state and there's federal. So, right. so it was a federal charge that was that you knew was going to violate your probation, Correct. and you could end up going back to prison. Yeah, what like what people don't realize, what people don't realize is that you can be on federal probation, get in trouble for something in the state, and then the state can even drop the charges. Like, yeah, you know what? It's a misunderstanding, no big deal, and they let you out, and the feds go, yeah, I just think. There wasn't enough to convict him, so we're going to send him to jail for two years. You know, and then suddenly it's like, it's like, what what just happened? Like, how did I? The state dropped the charges. Why am I now in federal prison? Well, because you violated your federal probation. And you go, yeah, but they dropped the charges. They go, yeah, we don't see it like that. And that's the difference between having your full rights, yes, and ha and not full have freedom and and or being on some sort. Of some type of supervision, yeah, right? You people don't realize. Well, they don't. They don't have the right to do it. No, no, they do have the right. You're not. Oh, they have the right to come in your house and dictate right. where, how, and when you live, or where. You know, what I'm saying it's 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 right. It's it's it. It can be frustrating. It's it's difficult. You know, but th this time I'm turning my life around. I'm not really wanting to deal with that. Right. Well, and 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 I kind of I kind of got lucky in the sense where, as I said, it was a misunderstanding. So going in there, I was preparing myself to take this all the way to trial to show my innocence right. in, in hopes of not having to deal with the consequences for the supervised release. Right. So I, I go like, so once I'm in there six months, I figured it would take six months to come to fruition, which is normal. But of course you get a public defender and you know, the public defender extended or waived my right to speedy trial. So I ended up being in there for 13 months right here in the Tampa in the Hillsborough County jail. Right fighting my case. So we're going back and forth. They're making offers, great offers, by the way, like, hey, time serve, probation, you know, one year probation, you know, but, time but, serve. And but, I'm like, but that, but you can't take that because you'll get right out on, they, they, they go, yeah, time served. And they let you out. And immediately your probation get for your federal probation gets violated. And you go in front of the federal judge and the judge goes, 24 you, months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm sending you to federal prison. For 24 months. Right. And that, that's what was weird because if I beat the charge, I'm only looking at a technical violation and I'm only looking at between 8 and 14 months. If I would have took the felony, then I'm looking at 20, it was 24, 
23 to 27 months. I'm looking at two years. So the whole time I'm thinking it doesn't matter what you guys give me in any plea offer. You know, um, I'm going to end up going to prison for two years if I take anything. Right. So we kind of went back and forth d- debating the the what charges and what I would take. And I said, nah, I'm just going to go ahead and take it to trial. You know, I think this is a kind of a, a misunderstanding. And, you know, I didn't I did this with consent. And so what happened was as soon as we get to the trial date, they end up making me an offer that I can't refuse. Which is like, so the day of trial or the week of trial, they made me an offer because I'm like, I'm going to go to trial, beat it and end up with nothing. But the day of the day of trial, they come up with an offer like, listen, we're going to drop all the charges, give you a misdemeanor and 30 days in jail time time served. We're going to withhold adjudication on the misdemeanor. So it won't even go on your record. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. They're like, no, we're not. Right. (laughs) <laughs> you couldn't get that if you got if you gone and won it would have been almost the, the same thing because right. really they're basically saying you're not going to get a charge right i'm like run it so i took the misdemeanor which only gave me a technical violation on my supervised release for the feds ended up going to the feds and getting that technical violation getting a year in jail credit for all the time that i had been in jail and so popped me right back out after 14 months of being away from all of your fans. <laughs> right back to your sister's spare room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lost my vehicle because they they sold it, obviously. To, to, well, actually, to use it as a trade-in. So I had to like try to raise the money to get a $500 clunker, right. a 1998 Ford Escort. It's sweet. It, oh, it's it yeah. is sweet. It's in the park. It's it's dripping oil in my in my driveway right That's now. That's the beautiful thing of it. It's actually transmission fluid, so it's more important. So uh <laughs> Um oh my god, my poor my landlord. Um <laughs> Did I tell you that my that I t- my landlord I I'm a, sorry, I, I don't know have I ever mentioned this that so my landlord one day sent me a text that said, um, I just saw you on a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, uh, this poor guy. Like, I'm the person you don't want living in your house. Like, he had to be like, is this guy living in my house? What did he do? <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> like, it's not like he, he, it's not like regular bank fraud. It's like, this is somebody you don't want around your property. He right. lives in my property. I might have a million dollars in mortgages on my property right now. Right, I might not right. know it. Um, so anyway, yeah, he said that. I was like, oh, man. And I was just about to, to be like, hey, can you can you renew our lease? <laughs> yeah, well, how did you get out of that? No, he did. He did renew it. He, he renewed, renewed it? it? Yeah, he has a sense of humor. He, <clears throat> But, I mean, I, I, you know, we never talked about it. Like, we'd never – there'd never been any discussion on the, on the subject. So it was fun. So it was funny. But you so, – I was going to say you had this, a similar type of thing when you started – Going oh, for jobs. Man. Well, well, and and the the problem is like having bad choices all your life at some point ends up biting you in the behind, and it does when when you're in your fifties and you're trying to get a regular job. So the whole time I'm in jail, I'm telling myself, "Hey, I get out, I'll go get a job at a Dollar General, Dollar Tree, you know, some place yeah, where they'll hire people, anybody." Yeah, that, that's right. They'll hire any anybody off the street as long as you're breathing. They'll give you a job. Yeah. So I, I go there and interview. The, the store manager loves me. He's like, you're hired. They do a little quick background check. So I tell him, I say, um, so I got a little fraud in my background. And he's like, eh, it doesn't it bother happens. me. Yeah. He goes, it doesn't bother me. But as long as corporate says I can hire you, I'm going to hire you. I Everybody's said, got some fraud. There you go. Oh, Colby's got some fraud. <laughs> No, he didn't. I'm not not in his back. Yeah. In his, in his, in you look at his future, not his background. Colby's, so, yeah. Colby's never. <laughs> Colby's probably never got a traffic. Have you ever got a traffic ticket? One time. You had to oh. the speed limit. You like <laughs> they, they converted you that quick? <laughs> so, so, so I I go to Dollar General, apply. He runs my background check, and it actually comes back partially. It it only comes back with a crime that I committed back when I was in living in Texas. Right. And, and so it, it came up that it was a, it was a theft back then. 
and it came up with a another crime I committed in Hills in Hillsborough County back in um, 2001. Those are the only two crimes that came up, and they were theft, and they still wouldn't hire me. Dollar General is kind of like, okay, so yeah, we hire felons, but just not your type of felon. You know, we're looking for people with a. And it was uh, that old. It was that old, and they still said no. And they still said no. Dollar General. Dollar General. Who would have thought? I mean, I, mean, I haven't been in a Dollar General and didn't think I was was not being dealt with by a felon. There's not one time I haven't been in there going, this guy has definitely got felony. Think on about record. all the times you went into to Dollar General with coupons and, and thought to yourself, I'm better than this. But you're not. <laughs> you're not. I absolutely am not. That's what's <laughs> this is proof. You have a letter that says it. I have I have <laughs> proof that I'm not Dollar General worthy. That I'm worth less than Dollar General. So <laughs> what was was that the only yeah, I I'll, I'll take one. Can okay, here, give me can we have one? Peanut butter or peppermint? No, I don't want a cookie. I'm you don't want a cookie? No, I'm kind of full. I ain't like a pig. The, the Girl Scouts are out there wandering about. Are no, they? No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I know it's good, and those are the good ones. Those are the good ones. Okay. So right. and so so then so then did you so then what? You just gave up? Went straight back to fraud? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No, I'm Sorry. not going back to fraud. All right. No. So what so, happened then? <laughs> so. Uh, at, at that point, I, I had tried um, Dollar General. I also applied at Lowe's, and I, and I applied at Home Depot. All of those three companies, by chance, used the same background checking company called First Advantage or something. And First Advantage, I think they denied me for Dollar General, just basically told the other companies, like, hey, this guy's a piece of shit, like right off the bat. So I was denied from all those spots. I was going to go try and apply at Walmart, and they gave me a first advantage form to fill out, and I'm just like, uh, never mind. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I want to catch that bus. That, that's right, yeah. <laughs> not, that, that's, that's not going to work. I um, applied for a job at the Spectrum Cable. So all the jobs I interviewed for, I was hired. The, the, the people interviewed me, say, we love you, we want you to come on board, but we have this little background check thing. And and that's what's been the block. Every every background check basically gets them to call and say, "Don't ever come on our property again, please." But what about <clears throat> what what about I've done my time? You've served your time. That's that's only for Match.com. So listen, <laughs> <clears throat> that doesn't apply to any any and most jobs in Florida, and and Florida allows them to go back as far as they want to. Other states have like New York, California, some of those liberal states have limitations on how much you're going to hold against them. Florida's kind of like, hey, whatever they did, make them deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so it so that's, that's what I've been dealing with. So it's been kind of hard to get employment. You know, I've been living off family and, and friends, you know, and associates, you know, just to, to get by. I finally got lucky and landed a job just basically um, emailing out retainers for people who are in class action lawsuits. So what I do is I kind of call people who've mentioned something about like Roundup or, or different products or class action suits that are going on. And I ask them, you know, if they're interested in going ahead and retaining this attorney. If they are, then I send them a, an email, them a retainer form, help them fill it out online, do that DocuSign. Right. And once they do it, they, they get it. So uh, I've kind of got a work from home job that started off that I actually didn't want a background check because I'm only dealing with emails and and certain people, so it's going. It's going pretty good. I'm starting off. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still kind of struggling, you know, because obviously I start off in a hole because I get out. I've lost everything. I got to get clothing, you know. Um, I've, I got to finish paying off this little inexpensive car I have, car insurance, cell phone, and all those other n normal bills. But you know, it's it's my goal to kind of get back, maybe start my own channel, talking a little bit about some of the people I've met and in, in all of my wayward journeys in life because I met some characters, especially this time around right. in jail, people who aren't quite as famous with their crimes as some people who I've been on their podcast. <clears throat> well, but uh, I was gonna say, there's the one guy that what that you told me about earlier about um, the guy, he was all over Tampa, all over the news. He the, oh, the yeah. guy who killed his girlfriend. Yes. And he's just gotten out for trying to kill his previous girlfriend. Yes. Is that the same guy? That's the same guy. Well, yeah. Well, oh, mur sorry. murder is 
is popular. I, I guess it, <laughs> everybody's doing it. <laughs> yes, I, I've met a lot of people who have, but I, I don't know. I don't. Eh, he's he's famous. I think he's more famous for the publicity they gave the crime more than what he did. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a jealous boyfriend in a fit of rage. But like, I can't wait to even tell yeah. you about this. Yeah, guy. but but that was. The, not it, it okay. It'd be one thing if it was, it was a fit of rage. It never happened before. There was he'd never broken yeah. the law. It was she was driving him nuts, and in a fit of rage, he you know whatever he chopped her head off because that happens. <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many times. Um, you think about yeah, it. You know? ooh, <laughs> if I had a butcher knife, <laughs> but um, but he'd just gotten out of prison for trying to. Well, he attacking. stabbed this uh, previous. Yes, he so. Being in jail with him, he did dis- display some of those tendencies of cutting off the other inmates' heads. <laughs> no, he was kind of the Mister Rogers type of of killer. Oh. You know, like he was the type of person he's, that he's such a quiet neighbor. Yeah, well, good, yeah and very a, very agreeable. Nice voice. Very agreeable, even in disagreements. You know, like you you might come to him and and say. You know, a, 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 a bud, you know, do me a favor. You, What's his, you, what was his name? His name was Matthew Terry. Nice. Matthew Terry. He's all over. <laughs> you could play like a clip. Like if you popped in a clip, because he's all over the news. All over the news right now. Matthew Terry. I mean, well, well, he, he already went to trial and lost, right? He went to trial and lost. He was facing the death. What was unique about him is DeSantis replaced the Hillsborough County because they wouldn't put the death penalty on him. And she was put in the place at 12 midnight on a day. And by four in the morning, she had changed his case from not seeking the death penalty to seeking the death penalty. Like as if that was part of the, the agreement, <laughs> the agreement to put there her in no place. Agreement? I've been bitching and moaning about why have, aren't you charging this guy with the death penalty and then I finally and you say well I don't believe in it I disagree I disagree so Ooh. boom you get walked the next person comes in and fucking does it and does it like in the middle of the night so yeah maybe so, might have been something going it on might, there. It, it, it's some t- something it's questionable yeah something there but like I said he displayed um, tendencies of control like having a being a control freak and and as I as I was about to say he's very disagreeable in a disagreement so if you had a disagreement with him, like, hey, you know, he slept on the uh, bunk because, you know, they got the bunk beds, yeah. bottom and top. And it's like, hey, you're leaving your shoes right here where I get up, you know, and I'm asking if you can move your shoes somewhere. So I already asked you to move your shoes somewhere. And he goes, you know what? <laughs> you did do that. And and I can appreciate, you know, your I can respect your wishes through all this. But uh, where else do you think I'm going to keep my shoe? He, he just kind of had this this aura of like. Oh, I definitely understand how you feel, but I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> like he was very cordial and polite and you could just, you could sense the, the like, rage inside the, of him. Yes. The other side. Matter of fact, what was funny about him is when I was in the unit with him, we were both um, porters, which is like trustees where we cleaned up. Like an for, orderly. Like an orderly. Yeah. Where we cleaned up for other inmates. We used to prepare their food, where we'd heat it up in an oven, and then we would feed them, like give the trays and stuff out. Right. And he got into multiple, multiple arguments with people about like where they would throw their dirty clothes. Like if if you threw some dirty clothes to a bin and you didn't make it, some people would just throw it and say, "Hey, it's clothes," and walk off. And he was like, "Hey, hey, 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 that didn't make it in there." <laughs> Very on edge guy. <laughs> Like I like I was telling you, it, it's like I didn't think it was a death penalty for complaining about the chicken that they served you at the yeah, in the line. It could like, go, you, it you, could you'd go. be like, "Hey, man, when I get this little piece of chicken, I'll be in your cell later tonight. Yeah. We'll talk about <laughs> That's it." Right? It's like you'll be a, amazed at what that bone, chicken bone, yeah, can do. Yeah, <laughs> I got a, I slipped a butcher knife out of the fucking kitchen. When, <laughs> got something for you. Oh yes, yes. He was he was quite he was quite politely intense. I mean, like smiling, and you could just see the fire behind his eyes whenever he stared at you. It was, it was sickening. It was so, scary. So what happened with the, the court case? So in, in, his, in his court case... Like he would go to court, come back that day? Oh. Would he go to court and come back that day? Yes, or? yes. Well, 
Yeah, he would, when he was going to trial, first of all, he was embarrassed about being on the news every day. And, and he went to the officers and begged them to not put it on Fox, Fox News that had him all over the television. They don't care. They didn't, well, sometimes they did. They would change it, you know, because he didn't want, he was, a, he was deathly afraid of someone jumping on his case. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> like, that was his number one phobia. He would never discuss his case. Like, if I asked him, I said, hey, aren't, aren't you going to trial Monday? He'd be like, why? Never mind. <laughs> What'd you sorry hear? I asked. Crazy eyes. <laughs> That's right. What'd you hear? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry I asked. I'm, I apologize. So he wouldn't even tell you if he's been to the bathroom, he's scheduled to jump on his case. <laughs> Did you pee? That's none of your business. But <laughs> Who have so, you been talking to? That's right. <laughs> Did they contact you? you Did about- they contact you? <laughs> I just want to know, somebody didn't flush the toilet. I'm just asking. But anyway, so, so yeah, he was, he was, so what happened with his trial is he was found guilty because they brought in his ex. Actually, Did, the, well, I, I thought it was because he cut the chick's head off. Well, that probably had a lot to do with it. And they had video of him leaving the scene and <laughs> wiping, wiping the knife off. Really, really his theory was there was. The the one armed the uh, one armed man is, did it. Yes, it really, his theory was somebody else did it. You know what's funny? It, I'll bet you that Colby doesn't know about the one armed man. No clue. See, no clue. Listen, oh I get this all the time. I'll use some pop culture reference from from you know a hundred years ago, and and <laughs> and he's fifty. Colby, right? <laughs> uh, Colby or Connor will be like, I just see the blank look on their face, and I'm like, Do you know what I'm talking about? Like. No, you don't know. You don't know who the one armed man is. See, but he's also oh wait, thirty eight. Just oh. turned thirty eight. Just turned thirty eight. So he's closer. Do you know who Wesley Snipes is? Wesley Snipes. Yes. I would guess it's a rapper. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! That explains Whoa, everything. I guess I must. I'm gonna he's guess actually, he's a rapper. He's a, he's a porn star. But no, let me. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Did you ever see Blade, the movie's Blade? Holy oh. Jesus. You're like he's like 26, 27 years old, right? Is that the actor? Yes, yeah, the yeah, actor. 28. Yeah, he's 28. 28. Wow. At, at, yeah. you're at 28, we're already you have not dinosaurs. Seen. Blade was it makes me think it's, it's a, what, a black guy on a motorcycle and blood. Fighting yeah, vampires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a he was he's a he's a Well, knight, he hasn't been in anything vampire. lately. He went to federal prison, so he hasn't been in anything yeah, lately. Yeah. Well, no, he's not he got out though. He got out, but he hasn't been in any movie since he's been out. You think it's because they're running that background, Jack? Anyway, so okay, so Shit here's happens. what I don't know how Wesley Snipes came up, but well, but, because he was the um, the last the fu- What was it? The Fugitive in the Fugitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where the one armed man was. Yeah, but the first Fugitive, what the first Fugitive it was the one armed man because in the first Fugitive it was, was Harrison with Ford. Harrison Ford. It was a remake of a TV show, but um. It was basically it was, it was a doctor. His he comes home. His wife has been attacked by a man and stabbed to death, and he wrestles with the man. And in the course of wrestling with him, he realizes that he's only got one arm. He had a prosthetic arm. So the whole time during his trial, he's screaming at his lawyer like, "Find the one arm man!" He's like, "I didn't do this. You have to find the one arm man." And so the big thing is throughout the whole movie, they're looking for the one arm man. And so whenever people say, like, well, who did it? The one-armed man did it. Because it's this person that doesn't ex- – nobody believes he exists. But in the end, you find out he does exist. And, and he was the one that actually killed the – The wife, yeah. Right. So he was screaming the one-armed – One-armed man. There was a burglar that came in. Exact fugitive defense. He gave the exact fugitive defense. I wrestled with this man. I fought with this man. And, and if, if you, you find ask, this man. If you ask me, I was there with him for seven months. If you ask me, I I believe that in his mind he cooked that up. I believe that he probably went over every paperwork and realized that he could make that story and fit. make that story fit. And, let's and of course say, he lost. Right, I was gonna say, but the jury did not believe did that. not believe that. Well, it's simply because he did the same thing to the 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 first girl. He, so he had a, a girlfriend at first up in Michigan where he lived, and he stabbed her in a junk drunken rage of accusing her of sleeping with somebody else and she managed to she only got away because the neighbors intervened he built some of the nation's largest banks out of an estimated 55 million dollars because 50 million wasn't enough 
and 60 million seemed excessive. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crimes, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. Okay. You know, because they come banging on the door as he's he's got her pinned and stabbed. And the neighbors are banging on the door, and so he leaves. So that's the only reason why she survived. But this one didn't, and he's running out of the house. They got him running out with blood saying he's chasing him, chasing the one-armed man or the person that broke in the house and cut up his girlfriend. Mm. It's the same story that he came home. and she, Yeah, the identical to the fugitive. Mm. <laughs> but what, what's so funny is being there with him, it's, it's, if you met him, it's absolutely obvious that he has that capability. It, yeah. it is the most obvious thing in the world, despite what's shown on television, the previews of him looking innocent. and He's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? I would never. Never. You see him? I, I like. I mean, <laughs> you imagine the jury was up there, and I'd be every time they'd say something, I'd look at the jury like. <laughs> Listen, the biggest, the biggest Not cop. True. He was the biggest cop kiss up ever. Right. Ever. I mean, like when the police came around, he used to dismiss. He would dismiss me as. Listen, I'll do the talking in front of the police. You don't have, we're working together, right? Right. So the police are like, okay, what happened to such and such? I go, well, listen, okay, exactly what happened was Mr. Jones came over this way, approached Mr. Allen, asked Mr. Allen, like, what happened to his tray? Mr. Allen answered, and I'm like, I can't even say a word. I go, well, uh, 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 uh. Mr. Allen answered him, letting him know. This. It's like, wow. Super controlling. Like super controlling. Super, even answers for me. So unique, unique guy. He wasn't your celly, though. Yes. Oh, he, no, he was your celly. He slept right above me. Oh, I thought you were just using that as an example. No. Did he ever move the shoes? No. But, he, but, you're, <laughs> but you're still here. Yeah. I, I, Maybe you know, I, I was submissive. <laughs> unlike and, unlike and that I, ex-girlfriend. I took every spork I found under his mattress. <laughs> you're not getting me with a spork, buddy. <laughs> um. Wow. <laughs> So, so who, who, else, who else you mean? Well, uh, well, wait, wait, wait. After he lost. What, oh, did, they, well, they take him away because he, if, if you're found for murder or if you get life or an extensive amount of time, they put you in lockdown because they think you might kill yourself. No, you can't have that. No, you can't. You, know, you can't have a killer killing himself. I no. mean, I mean, right, justice so. wouldn't feel like it was meted out. Even no. though they, they wanted to kill him, they wouldn't allow him to do it to himself. They feel like they were cheated. So, um <laughs> People think he's funny. See, Colby's laughing. <laughs> anyway, so so who else? Who else should mean? What, what else? What else happened? All right. So all right. So I guess we'll do. Let's do the serious people first, and then we'll do the non life threatening people. So then we have. So I'm in a pod at the Falkenberg Road Jail, and I'm one of the orderlies. There's four orderlies. So it's three of them are murderers and me. So this is very. So clean up and taking care of business is very serious. Like, are you going to sweep your section? Do you laugh around and joke with these guys? Of course. <laughs> what do of they do? They, they, listen, but they make jokes like, well, Mr. Allen here is the only one with the possibility of getting out. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Please, come on. You know I'm going put, put, to put money on your book? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You, you promise? Yes. Put it down. Put the, put the weapon down. Yes. <laughs> So what? Ha who, who was the other guy? All right, Tyrone Johnson. All right, Wait. black guy. Black guy. How okay. did you know that? <clears throat> How did he know that? Anyway, <laughs> Tyrone Johnson killed his girlfriend and her son. Wow! In okay. the apartment. So. At why? Because if it had been on the beach, it would have been more romantic. Why in the why in the apartment? I didn't ask him. Why in the apartment? I didn't. I didn't ask him. It was a little okay. So um, he's he stabbed. No, I think he shot them. You never you never fucked with these guys. Like, come on, Tyrone. Honest, it's just me and you. Oh my! What listen, happened? listen. Tyrone was the biggest re zealot 
of religion. I hate those guys. Fake. The biggest fake zealot of religion that I've ever met in my life. Ever met. Those, uh, what are the Christian for the stay or what are they? They, yes. they walk in and grab the book and start. Hip, hypocrite all the way. <laughs> complained when, about everybody else having a problem. And then when they left, when they leave, they would drop the book. <laughs> they pick it up when they walk in the door and they <laughs> drop it as they're walking out. <laughs> the biggest religious fake zealot ever I've met in my life with all kind of emotional issues. So is he, he's going to get out? No, he. So you I, can talk like this. Okay. <laughs> Because if he's getting out, you better be more polite. Uh, never mind everything I've no. just said. But anyway. wait, wait, what do you mean he won it? <laughs> Hold on. He won his appeal. <laughs> he wasn't a bad guy. I knew he was innocent. That's right. He didn't kill them. So his accusation is of shooting his girlfriend and then looking for her son mm. and shooting him underneath the bed as he hid there. I think he, think he was 11. Douchebag. Yes. Okay. His reason for doing that is um, apparently his his son, this was his girlfriend, and that wasn't his boy that, that he killed her, but his real son committed suicide. Tyrone was in the military, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Okay. His real son committed suicide, and I guess he was watching a show, and his girl wanted the, her, him to take her somewhere, wanted to go somewhere, and he said no, and she goes, that's why your son is a bitch. And end up killing himself, you know. And then at no, that's that, what he said. She said, "Of course, yes." Okay. And well, they have video of him crying in the police, and crying is something he does quite frequently. He's a he's a crier. Yes, he break down every every so often. <laughs> it's Jesus. like Ty, 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 Ty. All right, you can have my piece of chicken. Just ease up, guy. Ease up. So. So he's emotionally unstable. Yes. So apparently his girl said that to him and he he snapped and shot her, which, you know, I guess they would have probably been understanding. But really, I think he got the death penalty for killing the boy. Yeah. He, he claimed that the girl had the gun and he wrestled it and shot her or she shot him. She shot the boy. All right. His, During the struggle. Yes. The gun went off and he shot. The, they, yeah. They, and they, they shot the, the boy. And, and and end up shooting her because she got more into the struggle is what they said. But the proof was that he shot the boy under the bed and then drug him out from under the bed. I'm assuming that ballistics doesn't uh, bode well for his version. No, it okay. did not. And he ended up getting the death penalty. So, mm. um, yeah. But um, the whole t- so the whole time he's there and with me. Now, he is... It, it's amazing that the group got along. Like we we got along. We were complimented as being a very thorough um, unit of click of orderlies. <laughs> the bathroom was immaculate. Showers were clean. You know, <laughs> nobody really complained much about things that didn't no, get done. No, I'll it, bet. It's like, hey, hey, you guys didn't take out the garbage. You have a meticulous fraudster who cl- <laughs> who's very, very cleanly, and you have the other guys keeping everybody quiet about it. <laughs> yeah, if you want the garbage taken out, you take it. It was a four-star review yeah, yeah, yeah. every time. Every time. They said we were great. We buffed and waxed the floors. We were very meticulous as a, as a, as a group. So the, the third murderer... I feel like this is going to get demonetized and I feel like we haven't done it said anything wrong, but go ahead. You really, you think so? No, it, it may get limited monetization just cause you keep saying, we keep saying murder. <laughs> like that's the kind of stupid, the algorithm just says it. That right. They'll just be like, this guy said this, this, this. Yeah, no, no. But we, then you have to ask them to do a manual or a, uh, is it manual review? Yeah. Manual. But I'm, not, I'm not painting them in a good light. Yeah, though. you're thinking that there's a logic to YouTube, oh. so they they may or may not. It's, a, it's automated. So what what happened with this other guy? What happened with the other Jason <laughs> serial killer? Jason Funk. Yeah, Funk. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Jason Jason <laughs> Funk um, stabbed someone. I think it was 26 times. It, it was a, a business partner of because his. because 25 didn't seem like enough, it and 27 be. seemed excessive. Yeah. Oh well, my God! I mean, at what point during the stabbing do you start thinking this is crazy? 
like, what am I doing? I mean, he's he's long gone. He's gone. I got this blood all over the walls. <laughs> so this is the major, major cleanup. So let me tell you something funny about him. He wouldn't. So he was back on appeal from the Florida prison. I think he did this 1990 or 2005, I think it was. Okay. That that he committed his crime. He was back on appeal. So he was he was part of the 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 clique also helping out. Um so your first meeting of him you would swear he was a flaming homosexual. Okay. I mean <laughs> But he's not. Yes. Hey. He he does that. He's been up the road and he is a, uh, I'm not going to think of the name, kind of a grandmaster of the Florida State Prison's RDAP philosophy. Okay. So he spits out all of those RDAP terms. Oh, you're awfulizing, oh, Isaac. My God. But he's, you're awfulizing. You're taking this as your own. Flaming like Richard Simmons, right in county jail, but he's in prison for a murder. For a murder, okay. so like so, figuring him out was like my main thing because I'm going, you're super syrupy. Mm -hmm. So if you're up the road with nothing but men and you have life, you had to have crossed over. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. I was go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, seriously. Like, I, I'm, and I wanted to figure out if he. So, in my mind, like, I wonder if he went in, if they exposed him, or what the secret. Said, well, he would never admit it. Like, trying to get the information out. Like, well, you know, like, did you have a boyfriend up there? He just look at you and 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 keep going. He wouldn't. Even, <laughs> he would. He would never admit it. He would never deny it. Super syrupy. There for murder, but is a huge. RDAP. Let's just call it RDAP because I forgot what the Florida program is. Right, right. So similar to the federal yes. R, R, uh, residential drug treatment yes. uh, program. So he he used to spend his time teaching me the Florida RDAP, giving me all the terms, telling me that I was like. So well, I don't understand. So did he go through it once or was he like, a, did he work no, in the he, program? he worked in the program. He's oh, at okay. the institution that everybody mm. in Florida wants to go to for the program because it's a soft ass institution. Okay. And hung around, of course, you know, nothing but black people in prison. So, yes, he did. So <laughs> was he a white guy? Yes. Okay. Do you remember the guy that was in Coleman that was there at the medium oh, for for a tax? Remember tax fraud? Not tax fraud. For, for the, he was a sovereign citizen. Yes. And he was. He's worse than him. Um, what was his name? Because he had to check Paul in every two hours. Yeah. He had to check in. Listen to this. This guy had been at the low. He'd become a sovereign citizen. He actually had gotten himself registered as a corporation and then managed to get a judge to write a letter saying that the Bureau of Prisons had no jurisdiction over his corporation. So it had his name. So it said – it was a, a letter from a federal judge that said – that said that the, the Bureau of Prisons has no jurisdiction over, and let's say his name is Matthew Cox Incorporated. So it has his name. And so he went, packed up all of his stuff, goes. <laughs> <laughs> he's laughing. This was a, he's at the low. Goes to the warden's office. He was at the medium. No, no, he was, this was when he was at the warden. This was, this oh, is how he got to the medium. That's how he got to the medium. That's right. right. That's so right. he went, went to, to, in front of the warden, stands there and waits. In, in front of the warden's office, finally, the lieutenant comes along and goes, what are you doing? He goes, I'm waiting to be released. They go, well, have you been called to R&D? He goes, no, but I have a federal judge saying you don't have jurisdiction over me. He read the letter and he goes, okay, okay, hold on. Let me get the warden. Goes to get the warden. Warden comes back, reads the letter and goes, all right, all right, I understand. Are you a sovereign citizen? And he goes, yes, I am. He, he, she goes, well, I know what to do about this. <laughs> Grab him. Handcuff him, take him in the shoe. He sits in the shoe for six months, and then they send him to the medium. And now he's in the medium where he never should have been. He wasn't prepared for the medium. And every two hours, he had to check in with a guard. He has to go up and show them because they charged him with an escape. So now you were already at the low, miserable. Now you're at the medium. You more have, miserable. More miserable. I don't remember his name. God, he was flaming. 
flaming. No, he wasn't. He wasn't flaming. Not he, like this guy. Oh, what? I remember one time you told me that he was on the top tier watching a guy take a shower because the showers yes. were all exposed in the medium, right? Because you can't let well, those guys. You, you have to be exposed out there because they didn't want. You couldn't have a separate private facility because you'd probably get raped. There probably could be rapes there. So they have your showers were basically right out in front of everybody. You have a door, but if from the top tier, you could look down on them and see guys in the shower. Like the door was so far away that you'd have to be standing there naked. And you said, you go, bro, this fucking guy was sitting up on the thing, staring at this guy. And I was like, well, I mean, he's, he's gay. And you go still, I just thought he was above that. <laughs> You're like, and he was. That's how he saw yeah, it. But look, like, <laughs> so <laughs> no, he much wasn't worse. flaming. I, I, you could just tell by his demeanor he was. That he was okay. He was quiet. Jason is flaming. I'm talking singing Madonna, Madonna songs. Hey, yeah, flaming. This flaming on. That's what I call. It. Absolutely flaming. Which, but nothing about him screamed murder at all. Okay. You know, and he didn't discuss his case and I didn't learn about him until I got out and looked him up because he never, he, he told me he had life and he probably had no chance of ever getting out. He came back on an appeal because I think they gave him an aggravated assault and the murder and they gave him life on both. So what had to happen? And that was excessive. Exactly. So it they just been life plus two years. Plus 30. So they changed it from life. Double life to life plus 30. And I'll bet when the judge did it and hit the gavel, he said, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Damn shit. Straighten that out. Got that right, baby. <laughs> Look, double life. Back to jail. Double <laughs> life. Like, I didn't have that coming. That's right. <laughs> life plus 30. Okay. Reasonable. But I can like, do that. Double life. Forget about it. Come on. What are you thinking? I'm going to die, come back, do another life term. Stop it. I'll do 30. I, he'll do the 30 first. It was, con it was concurrent. So he was, he was good. So he'll get the 30 done. And, now, in case they bring back parole, like that's ever going to happen. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Then I got a chance, but double life, no, unacceptable. So, so that was that was his 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 hope. So yeah, he gave no murder. He was probably the the person that chilled out. He was kind of like my partner in keeping the other two calm because he was he had done enough time that he wasn't as upset as the other two who were pending. Yeah, he'd accepted it. He, he's had accepted These, Those guys were on the on the beginning, the beginning, the starting point of their life sentence. This guy was he he had he'd settled into it. He had settled into it. Yeah. So he you know he'd get up. Tyrone would be in a bad mood or crying. He'd know. rub his shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that the, the like, all who, these murders, the I one mean, guy's crying all the time, the other guy's like, it's okay. It's he's okay. like, well, he's like, oh, rainy face. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're joking, What's with right? The, you yeah, know. he called him that. He no. Goes, Who's got a rainy face this morning? <laughs> I'm like, where am I? <laughs> the other guy's you, yelling, straighten your shoes up. All the shoes have to be pointing that's south. Right. That's right. It's like, let's not be so intense, Mr. Perry. <laughs> Loosen up. <laughs> wow, that's a set of characters. Oh, my God. And uh, we're all trustees. That's a TV show. That it was a, Yes. Yes. In fact, we used to tell, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, the trustees are all murderers. They're like, but you're not. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, they, I'm glad they, to be alive right now. I never now. found the body. That's the trick. <laughs> so listen, I have a question for you. Did you guys, so when I, do you remember you know, the Marshalls holdover in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. I've never been there. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's, you I've know. I've heard about it from a lot of people. It's honestly, it's like a unit. It's like a, um, like a unit at, at, um, at Coleman at the medium. So if you took one of the, the units that we were in, like, you know, it's two tiers, and you basically made it, like, four times as large. No, no, may, maybe six times as large. So it's one long, with, and, then, and then there was a gate in the middle and a, and a walkway. But, you know, they serve, obviously, it's like being in the shoe. They serve you through the, you know, you don't get out and go get your food. Like, so did you guys have to heat up their food and give them to it? feed them through the tray they so got this out? is this is falkenberg it's open bay okay so it's just like the the low where it's four bedrooms in a section with a wall up right. so there's 72 there's 72 beds 
No, there's 64 beds and then there's people sleeping on a boat in front of certain cubes. So when you come in, you start off on the boat and then you make work it up to a up. bunk. You work your way up to a bunk. The trustees, they have an area. We have a washing machine because the way they work is um, we wash and dry the towels, the washcloths, and the boxers and the socks. So a unit gets a load of all those new. We pass it out. So when they go to the shower, they have a new towel. And when they're done with it, they throw it in a, in a bin and we wash them. Okay. So we slept in one area. We had one little cube. But we are the only ones that had double like bunk beds. We had one bunk bed and two regular beds. So whenever we, when the food comes in, it would come in on a cart. We would stick it in the oven, heat it up for about 20 minutes, take it out of the oven, get them ready, and then they would line up and come and get their food, and they would eat out at tables. It's okay. open bay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, guys, when you said you had to heat up their food, I thought, what, you're heating up their food and bringing it to the, to the room? But no, no okay, I Heat it up, and then they'd line up, and, and so we would hand the trays out. You know, you know of course, so I want to say this about them. They were very – they. Who? I don't, I don't have a nice word. The jail? No, I'm talking. I want to say this about the three, the three murderers. Okay, all three of them. We need a better, a clickier name than the three murderers. Like the, something. The three musketeers. The, okay, <laughs> three musketeers. Okay. Let's call us the cleaning crew. Yeah. All right. I want to say this about them. They were snitches. They were. Oh, they told on everybody. Oh like, my God! They went to the police on everything. Boziak steals a tray. Oh, I'm just gonna tell the cops. All right. I'm like. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, it, it, the motherfucker took a tray. You're chopping people's heads off. <laughs> I mean, it's like now, <laughs> now you're Mr. Morality. You stabbed <laughs> someone 26 right. times. Yeah. They, <laughs> they would actually get pissed off. Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. He pissed all over the floor. He shit in the bathroom. Well, I'm gonna tell the police. You, 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 you chop some chick's head off. You shot a child, and you stabbed someone 26 times. Yes, and you're upset because. <laughs> Billy Bob took a tray, an extra tray. <laughs> it's not right. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, well, I would tell them. Oh, they'd argue in the morning if someone snuck in line twice. Oh, you've already eaten, Matt. Mm. I, I, I was just standing around going, this is unbelievable. These are murderers and they're telling the cops on. It's, un, it's unbelievable. It's, and, and when they talked about it, they talked about it as if they had some kind of higher moral code than the rest of these drug dealers and drug users. <laughs> like, well, you know. Wow. I mean, they, they do that because that's how they live at the house. Oh, they don't clean up behind themselves. That's how they live at their homes. Like, but but you kill at your house. Yeah, so I, I don't say I understand why you're not in here killing. Around your house. <laughs> like, why aren't you killing in here? I don't understand. Like if they do that, just kill them. I don't understand what the problem is. I mean, you know. <laughs> You're, you're always a, I guess you're a big man when you've got the nice or, or, or it's an 11 year old or a woman. Yes. So. But when you're dealing with another man, like, yeah. hey, Popo, excuse me, yeah. come here. Can you handle this for me, please? These guys are no good. So those are, those are the high level people that, that I guess I, I dealt with or met when I was there. So there was a couple of people who I, there's a lot. And, and like, I tried to narrow it down to the ones that I thought right. were hilarious. So. All right, so we had a gentleman by the name of Mike. So jail, unfortunately for America, they lock up a lot of homeless and mentally ill people. So, no. Yes. No. So we had a lot of mentally Why ill. Why don't they send them to all of the insane asylums that they have all that, over the place? They've closed. That, that, that don't exist. Like yeah. back in the 70s, they would... They had a say, like, you know, Colby doesn't know this. What's this tell Colby? Like, they actually had, in the, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, like, they had insane asylums. And you, then in the 80s, they just closed them all. Do you know what happened? And I, I can't think of the name of My memory is garbage. I can't think of the name of the case. I'm hoping I can get it, like, but the Supreme Court. So someone sued because there were people being placed in there that weren't technically insane. All right. And there was a lawsuit that the Supreme Court allowed to go forward, which closed every insane institution in the United States. Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> that's why they all shut down. It had nothing to do with the states like, hey, I don't give any money to that because, you know, if they thought you were crazy, that's where they sent you. Right. But they, they shut them down. Now they do have a couple of hospitals, but they're hospitals and they have a ward for that. Right. But that is the very unstable unstable 
if you have a, any level of stability, they're going to let you out. And they don't hold you. They can't hold you longer than 90 days anyway, the way the laws are structured, but not to get boring. Anyway, so there was a gentleman by the name of Mike who used to, from time to time, and I, I'm going to tell you why I, I bring him up. It's hilarious. is because if you spoke to Mike at any point in time, but after I tell you what he did, he would have a conversation just like you and I. Like if I approach him and go, hey, Matt, how's it going? He'd be like, I'm good. What's up? I'm just chilling. But he, so his issue was he would take a blanket and put it over his head and then start beating himself in the face. Like he'd go under the blanket and be hitting himself. Like when he'd come out, he'd have a bloody nose or a black eye. He used to run into the wall. to the, He cut the top of his head and had to go to medical so i hate to ask it but why do you ever I, ask him like yes. bro, what are you doing i get a little frustrated sometimes man <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> me too <laughs> but i've never done that i know i'm a little different <laughs> you got any chips yeah <laughs> <laughs> anytime you spoke to him it was like you can like he could be under there punching himself. You're like, Mike, Mike. He'd come out. Yeah, hey, what's up, Isaac? What's up? Are you okay? Eh, I'm a little down. Wow. And this, and, and it's not like this happened a few times. No, this happened, happened over the course of the police would. The police were upset because they couldn't get medical or the psych ward to take him because he was so his demeanor his demeanor was so normal. At all times. It, like, if you talk to him, he was fine. Like, you say, stop beating yourself. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to go watch TV. No. And he'd get up and go get a chair and watch TV. His demeanor was every moment normal. And then two hours later, <laughs> he'd, he'd be beat. beating the crap out of himself. You'd look up and he's bleeding from the nose. Or he knocked one of his teeth out. And you're like, what happened to your tooth? Eh, I knocked it out hitting myself on the bed for a... So... So what was he in there for? He, I would say it's trespassing or di di disturbing the peace, something like that. I couldn't exactly get his charge. And every week his mom would come and see him and he would get this package of food. Like uh, they'd order him a package and he'd get a ton of food and he'd eat it all. Like a, uh, a $70 bag of soups and stuff would come and he'd eat it all within a 48 hour period. Like a feral child. And he'd go to visitation. Oh, hi, Mom. How you doing? Do you remember um, Palmer? Yes. <laughs> Palmer <clears throat> was mentally the, disturbed. The, the white guy Palmer, right? The, the one that used to sweep the compound all the time? Rob the was, Rob multiple banks? Yes. That's quite a story, too. I wish I could track him down. He, he yeah, he was bizarre. He was, I talked to him all the time. Yeah. He, he, so did he ever tell you about the time he tried to escape? Yes. Listen, this guy was just like a normal, you'd think he was just like kind of a normal white guy. And so was Mike. If he, you, if you talk to Mike, you'd be like, Mike, he knocked his tooth out. Like Mike, what happened to your tooth? Yeah. I knocked it out, hit myself against the bedpost. And you're like, oh. But, well, so, okay. so so what do you say to that? You know? Paul, um, just for people watching, Palmer was a guy in the medium who had robbed a bank, and basically Palmer had told me, and I think he sure told you this too, is that he'd never had a job where he was able to support himself. He'd had multiple jobs, he's never able to get one where he could support himself. So one time he goes and he robbed the bank. Went in, you know, with like a note or whatever it was. I don't know it was what. A note. They, it was always a note. Right. Because he didn't get much time. He got like three years. But what time. happened was they changed the law to where he ended up getting 10 years. Right. Because it was also multiple times, too. That's where they yeah, didn't but, help. Yeah. Because he had gone he had, to prison. He'd gone to prison, got out, and did it again. Right. Well, his, he was shooting for larceny because he was trying. Larceny is basically using the law is using uh, the company's rules against them. So the rules of the FDIC in a bank is you have to give over the money if it's requested right. during a robbery. 
So what he would do is he would request the money. Can you please? He put please in the note. In his mind, he, he committed larceny. Well, they changed the law. And if there was any intimidation whatsoever, they put intimidation in the robbery. And they hit him with a robbery. He was very upset about that. That, that he got the last time he was in jail, he got robbery. Because on larceny, he only gets five years. So his plan was always just to go away for five years and get back out. I used to talk to him all the time. And, and they blew it and they gave him 10 and really pissed him off. <laughs> Not that it changed anything. He was, he was just super calm. Yes. But one time he had he tried to escape. He put on like multiple layers of clothes. And this wasn't at Coleman, but he put on at another prison. Put on multiple layers of clothes. Walk walks up to the gate. Keep in mind these gates are you've got people in in you first of all they have um they have towers. They also have the the pickup trucks that are driving around, right? The perimeter. the perimeter and the gates have motion detectors on them. He climbs the gate or climbs the fence, climbs through all of the concertino wire, and as he's going, he said it's stripping off clothing. clothing. He's he's shedding clothing so he can get through all of them, climb up. He finally gets over the second gate and ends up at the bottom of the tower. And he said, he's down there. He said, I just got there. He said, I'm, I'm naked. And he said, I look up and he starts banging on the door. And finally a guard comes and looks down on him and says, Hey, we got an inmate out here. And so the, 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 one of the, one of the pickup trucks comes around and they run out and they get on the ground and they handcuff him and they take him back in the, to the, they put him in the shoe and he got charged with like a, an escape or something like, which was three years. Yeah. That was his plan though. He wasn't ready to get out. He was, oh. <laughs> I didn't know that part. Yes. I talked to him all the time. He wasn't oh my ready God. to get out. He was nuts. Yeah. yeah. He was, he was, he thought he was in control. So his, his, he'd come up with a problem in his head and, and his solution was more jail time. Yeah. They but he didn't like to be, oh wait, but he liked the medium. Did he like the medium? Like there was, yes. okay. He didn't like the pen. He liked the medium. Yes. Okay. And he was sweeping the compound all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Nice guy. He was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. So you were saying, so you were saying mental, the boom, 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 banging yes. his head. Well, I bring Mike up because his demeanor, so, so super calm. And that's why they never took him in to the psych ward because they're like, this guy's, there's nothing wrong with this guy. He's very calm and relaxed. He's just beating himself up. I mean, is, is that a problem? He'll be like. Literally. Yeah. Not figuratively. Ah, oh, I kind of <laughs> beat myself up about that. No, no. He's Yo, beating himself yeah, up. I'm, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> have you, con next time somebody says I'm frustrated, I'm going to say, have you considered wrapping a towel around your head and banging it against the wall? No. Oh, it's it works for, for a buddy of mine. <laughs> it's been known to work. It's been known to work. All right. So then um, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Roderick. So <laughs> what did Roderick do? Well, how many of these lunatics are on this list? Um, well, we got Nico. Who was the millionaire um, snitch for the feds? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Let's go. Go to Roderick. Let's, go ahead. Well, Roderick is a. <laughs> anyway, Roderick is a big. T well, no, Roderick is a. <laughs> how do so, you how do you, I, how do you explain it? So can I explain him, and then you give me a description because I can't come up with the proper okay um, derogatory term for Roderick. So Roderick is the is the kind of guy that. He's a, a people pleaser and he kind of does everything. He's one of those people that gets along with everybody. Like, hey, how you doing? What's up, man? What you need, man? I got you. I got you. Right. So he hangs out with a bunch of different girls and, and, and some of these girls sleep around. So he might hang out with some prostitutes to sleep around, give them a ride. You know, he might have a brother. He'll deliver. Somebody needs some drugs. He'll deliver some drugs. He'll pick up drugs and help them out. So he had a prostitute that I guess he was friends with that ended up that was sleeping with a supposedly a senator. Okay. Right. So this girl told him, listen, this senator is, I think it's a state senator, but I'm not sure. But this is a story he told, so I don't know if it's true. So he supposedly this girl ended up sleeping with a, a, a senator and the senator was doing drugs or something and he'd fall asleep. So he'd smoke weed or something and pass out. So she told Roderick that would pick him up. So he's like, whoa, the next time he falls asleep, call me. Because then they're thinking they're going to go by his house and 
she lets them in and they steal a bunch of stuff from it. Right. So I guess the senator falls asleep. He, he gets goes, the call. He gets the call. He goes over there, steals some valuable stuff, some like some um, what do they call it? Paraphernalia, not paraphernalia, um, memorabilia. Right. Some sports memorabilia. Supposedly some um, some money, some jewelry, like watches, like Rolex and stuff. They steal all this stuff out of from the senator, and they they both leave. So he gets arrested, and he goes to jail for um, obviously trafficking drugs because he was on the run for, I think he had got into a shootout with somebody or something along the line. So when he goes to jail, he decides that he probably wants to, to tell on the senator. He wants to use the senator's information as leverage. Like, hey, hey I want to tell somebody about this situation. That- that you know, a senator this, has a drug problem? The senator like, has a not, drug problem. That's not really a, a get-out-of-jail-free card. That's well, he's, just... he's thinking it is. <laughs> but he's kind of a <laughs> like a multi, multi-faceted hustler right. that, that runs around and, and he boasts. So he tells everybody in the unit about this. He's walking around telling all these people that he's about to get out of jail because uh, he knows a, a senator that does drugs that he's going to turn in. You're not, but okay. <laughs> well, he didn't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was his master plan to do it. But um, I guess that didn't, didn't work out too well for him. So he's kind of a kind of a shysting hustler that tries to hustle a bunch of different people. You know, he was he was kind of bizarre. Okay, low level street hustler. Low low level street, but he was funny though. If you if you met him, he he kind of he kind of talk. <clears throat> if I can do his voice, like listen, 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 Zach, Zach, my man, Zach, what's up, man? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> One of those guys that's always happy at all time to see you. Yeah, that's my boy. I'm telling you, we all going to come up, though, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Nico. My, <coughs> my man, Nico. So, Nico explained to me the ways of snitching. So, a, 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 <laughs> that I didn't know. I mean, like, insider snitching. So Nico did federal time, right, and got his trafficking charge reduced down to, I think he was sentenced to three years, and ended up serving one, for okay. like uh, kilos of cocaine, something that would normally get life. He ended up with one year. He, as a matter of fact, he had my lawyer, Miss Paul Mary, okay, who insisted public defender. No, she was his lawyer. She he paid her, who insisted that he shouldn't do. He paid her less than I did, by the way. It's upsetting. Okay. Anyway, you know, I paid anyway. <laughs> Is this for your first, for the, the federal charge the first time or this time? Um, My federal charge the first time? Yeah. Yeah, I paid Lori. Oh, okay, that was her. Okay. Yeah, I paid her. Anyway, I'm very upset about that. But anyway, okay. <laughs> anyway, he paid her and Lori argued that he shouldn't spend one day in jail. <laughs> Is to this- the judge. <laughs> Whereas to me, she argued that I should be willing to, to take responsibility for my crime. Right, right. I when I was say. arguing against spending 10 years in jail. <laughs> but <coughs> she got in front of the judge, and I'm reading the transcript, and argued the judge that this man shouldn't spend one day in jail. But I, as I told him, you know, to me, she argued that I should be happy to only spend 10 years in jail. Anyway, <laughs> love Lori. So <laughs> You follow the 2255 against her, right? Yeah. Like, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me going down that road. All right, so <laughs> he was teaching me the ways of of snitching, giving me insight that I did not know. So insight number one, the feds pay snitches. Yeah. So if you're lucky enough to become a paid informant, they give you a percentage of whatever the drugs are worth or whatever money is seized. That also includes ghost money and drugs. So if I'm a paid snitch and let's say Corey is, is doing drug transactions. Right. And I approach Corey and I say, Hey, can I sell you a million dollars? That's worth Colby. Of cocaine? Oh yeah. Colby. Corey, Sorry. Whatever. Corey, Sorry. Corey, Colby. I got it wrong for <laughs> to save face. <laughs> Plus, okay. it's been 15 months, so <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> so Colby's selling drugs. Yes, and, and and I'm a paid informant. 
if I can get him to agree to buy or sell a million dollars worth of drugs and he doesn't have it, right? I would get like a percentage of the million dollars that he could never have come up with to begin with. And they would actually pay me that. Nice. I told him, I go, you're lying. He goes, no, I'm not. It's in, in, in an agreement that he signed. Hmm. So informants that are paid are paid a percentage of whatever. So obviously they look for higher level drugs. So the more drugs they can get someone to agree to, the more money they actually make. It's absolutely unbelievable. So he is a millionaire from the people that he's set up. What was he doing in jail? Um, Because he sold to, he had four sales in St. Pete where he sold to an undercover four different times and they gave him eight charges. He violated supervised release that he had five years after only being out eight months, he absconded. Like in my 14 years in prison of doing legal work, all of the informants that I have met and the stories I've heard about informants, they are the worst people in the world. They try to play both sides consistently. They feel like if the police are on my side, I can do whatever I want. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm. I, I listen. I met a guy in in the low that was literally. I mean, it was insane the stuff he was telling me. It was like, I mean, he's and he'd get he'd get he'd get caught for something, and the other DEA agent would come in and say, "Look, you can't charge him with that." Like, like we're the ATF. We got. No, it, I understand he had the guns. I understand this. I understand that. We've got him. He's in the middle of this huge drug transaction. You can't charge him. And they dropped it, dropped it. So a lot of times they would protect him, you know, but I understand at some point when you are no longer valuable and you keep, have gotten away with all this stuff, one day you get busted and you go, Hey man, I need some help. And they go, uh, uh-uh. and you get 20 years. And they're like, well, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I we, had, we had an agreement. It's, <laughs> we did, but you're, we're done with that now. It, it, <clears throat> I don't even want to start on that pack. I got so much to say about it. So um, one of the so he he taught me a lot. That was one of them. the The trick that always blew my mind was that he wanted to snitch on someone because he's in. We're in a state pod. We're in a pod with people with the state, right. and the state doesn't. Well, they didn't do like snitching and time cuts. They are starting to now. Just so you know, I wanted to tell you that I, I learned that Florida's starting to right. If you if you tell, we'll give you less time, type of shit. Right. <laughs> but um, so so all the state people in there, he was walking around gathering cases. So when he's telling me this, I say, "Well, he goes, yeah, I'll just have him move me to another pod. Like I'll get a case. Somebody will tell me enough to get me a case that I can turn into them, and I'll have him move me to another pod." I say, well, don't you think it'd be suspicious that you move? He said, no. What I would do <clears throat> if I left is say I got moved out because of you. As soon as I left, I saw anybody in the pod. I tell him, hey, Matt's a snitch. <laughs> he told on me and they moved me out. <laughs> Which, like, in my mind, I'm going, that is freaking brilliant. Because you've just reversed right. the, the entire. You're the snitch. And how do you prove that you're not the snitch? Right. And everybody's saying it. Well, they moved so and so. They moved him. And he said oh, that he, he got, got moved. Oh, Max, the one that got on. Yeah, Nico yeah. moved. Blah blah. blah. And I'm going to myself. Like you guys have, yeah, yeah. no scruples. None, none. You're absolutely unbelievable. Plus, they're paying you all this money. When, but, when I was going to say, when the FBI came to see me at Coleman, they offered me money, and I went no. She says no. I mean, we can put. Two three hundred bucks on your books, or, you know, on your account. That way, you have commissary. Like, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I just want to make sure that you're taken care of. I said no. I said my fear is that I cooperate, you get a case, and we get in front of the judge or with or the prosecution, and the prosecution says, Your Honor, like we don't need to give Mr. Cox any time off. We've been paying him for all of this information. So because I had spoken with my cousin who said, don't ever accept a dime because he had met a guy that they were giving him like a thousand dollars a month for like a year and a half. And when it came time, they busted the people. They just stopped showing up. And he was like, okay, wait a second. I need my time cut. And they said, well, yeah, but we've, we've been paying you. And he was like, I didn't do this for the money. They were like, I know, but 
you know, we went to the prosecution and they said, look, that we paid this guy, whatever, $18,000 over the past 18 months. And, and, you know, he was like, well, look, he's got something out of it. Like, I'm not going to file anything for this guy. He's got a couple more years. He can do those two couple more years as if $18,000 is worth two or three more years. But, you know, he said, yeah, he said, so. So my cousin was like, so if they offer you money, he goes, don't take it. So when I sat down, they were like, listen, you know, if you need me to, I can put money on your books. I said, ah, nah, I know about you. <laughs> I'll starve. No. I'll with that. Yeah. Well, both, I think both sides are. are Scumbags. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm fine with that. You're fine with that. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it, it's, it's just that some of those people go bad, Matt. They actually use the law. To break the law, they think that they're you. You weren't in that category. You didn't like try to use law enforcement to be able to sell and and deal drugs. Right. I mean, right. they they use them to bring down their own competition. <clears throat> right. Oh, you want to mess with me? I'll get you arrested. Yeah. You know, I'll use the government to, as my as my own retaliator. So yeah. like yeah. Chapo. Like Chapo. Like, yeah. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I'll give you information on this. Uh, these cartels on this guy and this guy and then have them all have your competition busted and then you <laughs> blow up even bigger yeah um so go ahead sorry oh no no it's just that um and and nico i guess had come to the end of his line you know he had he had discovered a body for them yeah he said he had a buddy that had had shot somebody and asked him if he knew how to get rid of a body and he gave that to the cops and the cop goes we just need you to go over there with with a wire on identified it as a dead body in there and then we're going to go in and he said he kind of walked in you know and the guy he oh my it. gosh is that a dead body <laughs> no 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 they asked him if he could like the people call hey can you get rid of a dead body he's like right. yeah so he said he came in and the guy he goes where's the body at let me see the body so he said he walked in this is why Lori was saying that he shouldn't spend a day in jail so he walked in and he goes and he sees the body the guy's laying there he's dead He's like, what the fuck happened? He goes, eh, we got in an argument over blah, 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 and I shot him. He was like, okay, well, let me call my people, and I'll, and I'll get them over here, and we'll get that out of here for you. And he said the guy pulled the gun, like, <laughs> and put it in his face. He's got a wire on. Right. Right? And he said he doesn't know what happened, and he didn't panic, like, ah, get in here, right. get in here. He said all of a sudden, he just kind of, like, got cool and said, what are you doing? He goes, I don't know you, dude. He said the guy with the gun said, I don't know you, man. How do I know you're not fucking going to the cops? And he said he looked at him like, dude, you, one of your moments, yeah. dude, you asked me over here, bro. Yeah, you called me. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? He's like, do you want me to get rid of this thing or not? He goes, well, fine. If you feel that way, then shoot me, motherfucker. And he said, started walking off to the door. He said, about to piss himself. Walked to the door, <laughs> opened the door, left and closed the door. Went to the car and said, oh, oh. <laughs> get <laughs> over here. <laughs> That's right. Cops bust in and, and, and took him to jail. He said Lori fought. That's the reason why he, he had already testified in trials to get his time down. But that's the reason why he only spent a year in jail on a three-year sentence. He did a year. And he wasn't even out six months before he caught a whole new four sales and delivery. And you said he had made a ton of money. So he had a ton of money out there. Yes. He didn't need to do it. He yeah. just... You know, the problem is that you, you get into that life and you don't know anything else. And then you can't even stomach going to a regular job. You're like, I don't understand. I'm going to, you're telling me I got to bust my ass all week and you're going to give me like $500? Like, fuck that. Because there's never been any consequences for you. No. Yeah. You know, it was funny because that's one thing he said that I, one of the lines that stick in my mind from being in there is he said, he said he was living a lifestyle where I committed a felony every day. And I told him, I said, you know, I remember when I had that lifestyle, mm. like every day I'm committing felonies. You know what I'm saying? It's, it sounds funny as a, as a criminal, but if you're saying that to a person that's never been to jail, it sounds atrocious. Right. You know, but as a criminal, you're kind of like, yeah, I, I remember that. See. Good times. Good yeah. times. Yeah. A felony a day. Eh. I'll top you. <laughs> Two felonies a day. <laughs> it's crazy. So last person. <clears throat> okay. I call him Mr. Pathetic. Now, I met him on the tail end of this is a long story. No, I didn't. I met him when I went to work. At some point, I went to work in the kitchen as a at the Hillsborough County Jail, Falkenberg Road. They decided one day that they're going to give me the privilege of working in the kitchen. So I'm like, you know, and like, we're going to move you to another unit. And 
We're going to move you to a quieter unit where it's quieter. And we're going to give you probably two trays for lunch, or two bag lunches. You guys are too good to me. I know. And we're going to give you a chance to work in the kitchen where you'll be able to eat extra food. Yeah. And we're going to cook you, like, we're going to give you some of the food that we feed the staff. I'm like, wow. Awesome. They're going to treat me good. <laughs> and they moved me from the, uh, mm. uh, the clean unit with the murderers into a unit that's filthy. So I, this is when I learned that me and the murderers kept the unit immaculate. Right. So they moved me to a filthy unit. It's, the unit is absolutely dirty. The, the people who clean up there, garbage. As a matter of fact, when I complained, they're like, I'm like, dude, I go, have you swept the bathroom? It's, it's junk all over around the toilet. He goes, the broom's over there. <laughs> like, you sweep it, motherfucker. Dirty unit. Um, there's, they have a tablet that you can use. So when I'm in my unit, I get the tablet all day. Right. In this unit, they don't pass the tablet out for later hours. Plus, you're working, so you can't even use the tablet that much. Then they send me to work. They're like, okay, you're working a 10 hour a day shift, six days a week. So then when I go for into, an extra tray, yeah, I'm so burning when, off the extra tray <laughs> easily. When I go into work, it's washing. There's 2000, there's 3000, there's like almost 4,000 people there. So it's washing 4,000 dinner trays twice. Wow. So when I come in, I'm washing the breakfast tray because at lunch, they give you a bag. So as soon as I get to work at 11 a.m., I'm washing the breakfast trays. Then I'm turning around and putting food in the breakfast trays, sitting it out for dinner. Once the dinner trays come back, I'm washing the dinner trays. After I wash the dinner trays, I get to go back. To how, my long, unit. how long did you do this? For about four weeks. Until? Well, until I, I got fired for uh, talking during count. <laughs> <laughs> If I had known that, I'd have talked the (laughs) second fucking day. Horrible. Why did you keep doing it? Why didn't you just say, look, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not doing this. I don't know. I said that to myself many times, but I don't know. I I don't even have a good reason, Matt. I don't have a good reason. So anyway. Send me back to the murderers. I I want to go go back. back to the murderers. At least it was clean. And they wouldn't tolerate these little pieces of chicken. But no, listen. so, So in that unit, there was a couple of people who didn't have to work. I don't understand why they were there at all. One of them was, uh, and I can't remember his name. I called him Mr. Pathetic. So he had no money and no, and he claimed to have no money and no friends. So, <laughs> That's how you introduce. Hi, I have no money. I have no friends. Well, he wanted a cup of coffee. It started oh. off with begging for coffee. And, and, and being in jail, I know you, you know <laughs> coffee is everybody begs for coffee because it's the appetite suppressant. Right. <laughs> so he's begging for coffee. I give him coffee. So after about the tenth time that day, I'm like, dude. He's like, man, I'm sorry, bro. I right now I ain't got any money. I'm waiting to get out. So he's telling me his story because he's, you know, trying to befriend me. So yeah. I guess I give him more coffee. So he's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm only hitting here because, you know, my wife put a. a a restraining order against me and I'm here for violating a restraining order. I'm like, really? I go, well, how long have you been in here? He goes, I've been in here, this time I've been in here like uh, about a month. I said, this time? How many times have you been in here? He goes, this is my fourth. I said, what the hell were you in jail for before? Drugs? He goes, nah, I just keep violating the restraining order. What? I'm like, against your wife? He's like, man, we've got two kids, man. We've been married for about 22 years. I don't understand. Like all of a sudden she just up and was tired of, of having me around. So I'm like, okay, well, what kind of work do you do? He goes, I don't work. I said, what kind of work did you do? He goes, well, I never really had a job. Like, <clears throat> so of course my mind's going like, what, the? what, what kept her, what made her, what made her wait 22 years? <laughs> <laughs> so I've, he's, I've never, he's never had a job. His wife owns a successful chiropractic clinic. She's the owner with other chiropractors under her they live in a very large well she lives in a very large he had to get out right well in, she yeah go ahead. in a very large house and he claims that one day she came home and just like i don't want to do this anymore i want you to get out of my house supposedly he says he drinks and he goes into a drunken rage or something and so she's like i'm tired of y'all I want you out of my house it's over i said well is she seeing somebody else he goes not that i know of 
She's just tired of me, but I don't understand like why she's tired of me. I do. Exactly. I'm like, uh, you know, we've been here 20 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> I can. I've got get, get out. Yeah. <laughs> I have some insight on her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm like, what about your friends? He doesn't have any friends. And he was living with his dad, and his dad was on the verge of throwing him out. I'm like, listen, Matt, Matt, you, this is a human pathetic. Like, if you looked up pathetic in the dictionary, it's this bitch. <laughs> I mean, what, why didn't he get a job? I don't know. That would be a question you would have to ask him. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, you never asked him? He just didn't want to get a job. Couldn't get a job? No, didn't... he said, I think he said he was going to get a job. But he, <laughs> he got 22 out. 22 years, what's he, holding you back? Yeah, he got out and he came right back. Twice. So he got out, came back, because I was there about a month, so he got out about a week and a half, came back to the same unit, so that unit must have supported restraining order like it might have been people who broke restraining orders. Right. So he came back for breaking the straight restraining order yes, he again. Went back. Yes. And then like I left that unit cause he was supposed to get out like within a month or something. Okay. I left that unit a couple of months later as I was leaving, I ran into him or going to court. I ran into him. I said, I go, did you ever get out? He goes, yeah, I got out. I go, how long were you out? Oh, about two weeks. What happened? And I called my wife. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> well, she said something. I don't remember. I think he said it was a Facebook posting that said something that he didn't like. And he wanted to ask her why would she put that on Facebook. <laughs> Curiosity does not trump. <laughs> does not trump the I mean, uh, restraining, restraining order. order. Yes. Well. Super, super pathetic. I said, what about your dad? Is your dad tired of it? Yeah, my, my dad's probably going to kick me out this time. I don't know where I'm going to go. But he asked me to keep in touch because he just doesn't have that many friends. So I was hoping to introduce him to you, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Are you sure you don't want to interview him? I, I, I... <laughs> get out of my house. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm all filled up with my uh, with pathetic, pathetic friends. friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. I'm talking about someone else. Oh, of course. They're not even friends here. I mean, anyway. <laughs> but, I mean, that that's kind of the the long and short of some of the people I met there. I think I, I listed all the ones that I really wanted to meet or mention. In, in my 12 months at Hillsborough County. Um, when I went to Pinellas County, there wasn't really any. What about the guy that you, you had told me earlier about a guy that was uh, in a, a high-speed chase or something? Oh, yeah. Um, cop, cop, uh, I have his name, too. I meant to look him up. Um, he, he tells that story much better. Oh, okay. The only part that I think is cool is when he was, because he drove across the Skyway, like both ways. He went to St. Pete. Then he turned around and came back on the Skyway. While being chased? While being chased. Yeah, he took him through like three or four counties. Listen, he jumped into the the Hillsborough County. And he was in the Hillsborough County River for about nine hours. Hillsborough County River? Is there not a river? Not river, not um, river. What, the bay? The, the bay. Okay. For like nine hours. Trying were, to elude them. Yes. The police. Why were they chasing him? He said because he dropped off a friend and he felt he was high. Of course. <laughs> he dropped off a friend and then he felt like someone was chasing him. It turns out <laughs> if you drive like someone's chasing you long enough, people will chase you. And he so, goes, that's probably what ended up happening. <laughs> what's with this guy? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to chase him. I'm actually going to chase him. <laughs> That man needs to be chased. <laughs> That's exactly what happened to him. He thought someone was chasing him. And he goes, like you say, eventually someone started chasing yeah, yeah. him. So he jumps out of the car and runs. I want to see if I can track him down. I want to see if I can find him. He'd be funny. Oh, my God. Listen, he's hilarious. If he's sober, he's also very easily induced. Oh, I'm boring you. So no, no. It, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, I woke <laughs> no, up at like sorry. three in the morning. Me too. Really? Yeah. Why? 
Just you just do now? I, well, I was scared, you know. Nice. <laughs> I just wake right. up. You know, it was I, it had, for a long time. It had been breakfast time. So I, anyway, go. <laughs> I was gonna say when everybody. I used to wake up at like you know five, and everybody'd go, "Why? Why you wake up at five, Billy?" Well, that's when they turn the lights on. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the <right>. guards <laughs> walk. Do you ever have the where they would do that? They in the low, they would turn on the lights. If, in, for like four o'clock count or five o'clock in the morning, they would turn on the lights and walk around the count. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Then they shut them back off for like an hour and a half. Like. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, you know, so you wake up and it's like, I might as well just get up and go get some coffee now. They already counted. I'm allowed to walk around. <laughs> and I'm walking around. What yeah. the hell? Then I'd go watch a, uh, go watch the uh, infomercial for Home Title Lock and think, I should be on that commercial. I really should. They don't have anybody like me. And, then, and now, now I'm do. on that way. And on. now they do. I mean, right? hey, that's what they hey. So it's it's good to be back and, 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 and back in play. Trying to put your... Trying, trying to, to put, put my back. life back together, trying to get it going. So um, those are some very interesting people to meet. Some of them I've managed to to, to kind of talk to. Some of them I want to track down and see if maybe we can bring them in here and, and talk to them and share more in depth their stories. That are probably not the guy that beats himself up. I don't think you want him in here. I mean, if we can keep him calm. Um, He's no, always. Oh yeah, that's right. Like, how funny would that be? He's sitting there with a broken nose. Wow. Bleeding, wow. blood, a missing a tooth. What happened to the tooth? Like a, I, you know, I was I upset. A little, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> like, what's he locked you, up well, for? I've been beating my head against the desk, and obviously I broke my nose. Yeah. Huh. You got a tissue or something? Can I? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, so you're trying to get back on your feet. Yes. If someone wanted, if someone was so inclined to say, hey. Or declined. But <laughs> To say, well, you, you want him to decline. So, <laughs> hey. Let me send this dude 20 bucks because, you know, he's trying to put his life back together. He's owes a couple hundred dollars to uh, to uh, 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 overdrawn on your bank account from when you, you know, took off. Yes. Like they don't stop yes. billing you for stuff. No, they don't. Um, so, you know, and they were so inclined. Like, are you going to be able to open up a like we'll have we can put either Colby can put his like before Colby put put his PayPal. Right, or you can get a PayPal or a Cash App, and I can put I'll try it. To, I'll get both of them. We can put it in the in the description. Okay, yeah, please, please, if you can help me get back going, so that I can make more frequent appearances and Absolutely. kind of get my life back going and, and stay on the right track this time. That's get, what I'm determined to do. Get out of the sister's spare room. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Listen, because I slept. I was in Stacy's spare room forever. My friend okay. Stacy. I yeah. stayed in her spare room. I told you that, right? Yes. I stayed in her. Well, the cop that we, we, she was running basically a rooming house. Like she's got me in one room. She's got the cop in the other room. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was a cop in the other room. Yeah. She was going through like a divorce and, you know, needed to stay somewhere and went and moved in there. Wow. A um, female cop on that? Yeah. She was a forensic cop. Oh, wow. Um, so, did you guys exchange stories? Yeah. She was, she was, she was interesting. She was an interesting <laughs> person. Right. Um, so, uh, I was going to tell you, did I ever tell you this, that I stayed, Stacy has in her house, she has like a salon and she also had a really big walk-in closet in the salon. I moved my bed into the closet and slept in the closet and wow. she was like, there's no windows in here. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, cause that way in the main room, the bigger room, which was about the size of a regular bedroom. I, w I was like, yeah, but I can do my studio in here. I can paint in here. And the bed's in the way, so if I put it in here, it just fit in the closet. So you, you could open the door, walk in, and lay in bed. It was just perfect. I fit perfect. Um, and she was like, "Yeah, there's no windows." I was like, "No, it's cozy." I, I'm, you know, after 13 years. <laughs> no, no, I'm good in here. This is nice. I sleep good in this spot. So yeah, it was. Uh, I stayed in there for yeah about 13 months. I think 13, 14 months is I oh, stayed. Wow. Yeah, bizarre, bizarre. Jess right. would come and see me. At the, at, the, in, at the house, yeah, we'd sleep in the in, in in the closet. We would put my put up my laptop and watch movies and lay in bed and watch movies and and honestly, like thrilled, like it was like this is awesome. Like you're in a closet, you live in someone's spare. You don't even live in their spare room. You live in their closet. And you're, you're watching YouTube videos on your laptop, and you guys are like, I've got it made. That's right. Like hey, compared to prison, it's, it's, yeah, it's much better. Much oh yeah, better, much better. No guard, like shut up. Yeah. Oh man. 
no murderers uh, feeding you dinner. So, yeah, that's not bad. Good times. <laughs> that's right. All right. Are, yes. any, anything else? What no, else we got? No, that, that, well, what about the YouTube channel? Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. YouTube channel. Um, should I promote it? Yeah, because we're going to – so shoot a video, and you're going to put it up on a, on a YouTube channel. Right, and where I'm going to kind of start talking to a lot of the people who I've met in and out of, and out of jail, giving some stories of other people that I know, describing them, putting my little spin and sense of humor on it. Um, hoping to take the channel to a level where I can interview a lot of different people, maybe throw in some skits and s- depicting some of the stories that we describe in jail situations that we think are hilarious. So please check it out. All right. It's uh, it's going to be uh, Isaac Allen, right? Isaac yeah. Allen, you know, Isaac YouTube Allen's channel. Podcast, YouTube channel. <laughs> we'll put the, in the the link in the description. So he's got to get, he's got to get a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So please, please, please subscribe. Yes. Thank you. That's it, right? All right, that's it? Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys checking out the video. And there was a little mosquito. Did you see a little mosquito just drive by? Fly by? He just went, woo. Um, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. And do me a favor and uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Leave a comment in the comment section. And <coughs> do you see the... The the big hand? Yeah, yeah. No, you're over here. So, leave a... <laughs> I, it's impossible to run a professional organization. Here. It is. Um, leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, check the description for Zach's Cash App, PayPal, um, and his uh, the link to his YouTube channel. Because when you first put something up... Even though people people will put in your name and it won't come up right away. Like you right. have to ha- get some subscribers and get a little bit of momentum, and then YouTube will start pumping. Put the, if, when you put in the name, they'll say, "Oh, this channel." Yes. Okay. Um. So it takes a little bit. So you know what I'm saying. Check it out. See ya. <laughs>